Hello and thanks for watching this continuing series on the wonders of digital signal processing. Today we're going to find the frequency response of a DSP. We're also going to find the steady state response and we are going to find the step response. Those are the three things we're going to do. So consider this difference equation and let us begin by asking ourselves what is the frequency response of this difference equation? Now it's clearly going to be based on the difference equation being manipulated in some way and we can simply rewrite the difference equation by substituting the exponential terms in place of the time-shifted terms. That's all we have to do and just watch as we do it and follow the pattern. It's all about the pattern where DSP is concerned. For the frequency response, we use the symbol H omega, and H omega is defined as the output signal over the input signal. So in, in, in some respects, this is very similar to the transfer function. You, we are learning about transfer functions in control systems, and there are transfer functions in DSP as well. And these functions always have the output over the input, and therefore they define how the input is manipulated to become the output. So it's really just another way of specifying the DSP, a different way, if you will, of specifying the DSP. Okay, so we're going to manipulate the DSP term by term. First, we're going to bring all the Y values over onto the left-hand side so that we separate the Y values from the X values. Then we are going to add exponents. We are going to keep the coefficients, but add exponents in place of the time-shifted terms as shown. And as you study this progression, you will see that we simply develop and remove the Y and the X on the left and the right, and then we do a cross-division, if you will, to get the Y over the X, and we're pretty much done. That's our frequency response as shown there. So I'm going to leave it on the screen for a few seconds so that you can follow line by line. And once you pick up the pattern, it should be relatively easy for you to do with any difference equation. Just notice that when we proceed from y n minus 1 to n minus 2 to n minus 3, we increase the value of the exponent. We go minus j omega minus j2 omega minus j3 omega and so on. So each of the exponential terms has an increasing n up there between the j and the omega. So that's a pretty simple pattern to follow and all the coefficients just come back. So let us see what we want to do next. Now we want to use the step response on the difference equation to find out how the DSP re responds to the step input function. Right, so we first have to transform our difference equation into the step response and then we have to find the values of our step response because this is an infinite impulse response DSP. It's recursive, 
and therefore we can expect that the values of the step response are going to depend on previous entries. Once again, I leave that screen there for a few seconds for you to digest. You can rewind and view it as many times as you like to follow what we have just done there in transmuting our difference equation into our step response equation. Okay, now having determined our step response equation, we are going to find six values of our step response list. Remember all these things are lists. X is a list, Y is a list, S is a list, and H is a list. So here we have listed the mass that's required to find the values of our step response from n equals 0 to n equals 5. And we see that the preparation of our table and the way we use our table is identical to how we use the difference equation to transmute the x values into the y values. But you might wonder what's going to happen as we continue, you might ask yourself, what happens when we go S6, S7, S8, S9, S10? How many do we need to calculate to find out what our DSP is actually doing with our step input function? Fortunately, there's a calculation that we can do that will show us whether our DSP is growing larger, smaller, flopping back and forth between high and low values forever, or eventually stabilizing to a constant value output, constant term. It turns out there's an easy way to find out this without the trouble of working out values forever and just like hoping that we'll work out enough to see what's really happening to the output value. This method is only going to work with stable functions, but this function is stable and we will show you a way to prove that this function is stable in later videos. But for now you will assume that it's stable, we tell you it's stable, and therefore if it's stable, we can calculate the steady state response in a simple manner from the difference equation again or from the step response equation because as you see there's a, quite a great deal of similarity. It has to be arranged in the same form where we have all the SN values on the left and all the U values on the right. Now the U value is just a constant because UN whatever is going to be a 1 once we are greater than 0. So we can set that side equal to the constant of 0.8. On the left hand side we have YSS. The SS stands for steady state. Y stands for output. So the steady state output from SN, the steady state output from 0 0.5 SN, and the steady state output from 0 0.3 SN is computed in the normal way and we simply divide, we simply extract the S, the YS, and divide by the, I, did, I left out a step there where we extracted the YS and we had then YS times 1 plus 0.5 minus 0.3 in brackets and then we divide to put that under the point 0.8 and lo and behold there is our steady state output of the DSP. It will eventually settle down to two thirds or 0 0.66 after it's flopped about a bit. Once we keep the input steady with the step function basically we're inputting a continuous stream of ones and the output will eventually settle down to a continuous stream of 0.66666. So thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next video.